what's going on here. What's going on? Why isn't the camera working? Hey, there we go. Now it's working. <laughs> oh, one of these days I'll figure this out. One of these days. But not today. Not tonight. <laughs> oh, I've got a few people that wanted to show up and listen tonight. So we are, I'm going to be talking about squirrels. So we got plenty of them and plenty of them out there. Oh, where are you guys? You said you'd be here. Don't make me do this. There. Okay. that one there's that one okay question is okay is this working now Okay, I think I've got it figured out now, where I am both live and recording. <laughs> one of these days, one of these days I'll figure this out. Oh, one or the other. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think this is the stream where I just goof around and see what I can figure out. So, uh, so anyway... Under the subject at hand, um, I'm talking about squirrels tonight, and one of the pictures I have featured here is a native squirrel to where I am from, which is western Washington. I'm in the Seattle area. Uh, this little guy is what is known as a Douglas squirrel. Um, the native language for them actually is, they call them chicories. Um, they are a protected species here in Washington. That doesn't stop them from being a problem. So. I oftentimes get these guys getting in and chewing up homes. So the problem is they're not as destructive as many other squirrel species. So I do what I can to try to mitigate the damage they can do. Um, a lot of that is really simple, straightforward stuff like trimming trees, keeping uh, bushes cut back, um, just general yard placement making sure you can do what you can to keep them from even getting on the house so a lot of what these guys are is well the big thing is they're protected is what it comes down to uh, washington state does have these guys lifted at listed as a protected species so what i end up having to do is basically get it so they can leave but they can't get back in now i have had times where i did have a mobile home no it was a trailer, a tow behind travel trailer, where the squirrels were actually nesting inside the ceiling of the travel trail, uh, of the travel trailer. Yes, clovers, I know you're very, the squirrels are very distracting. So I ended up having to cut a hole in his ceiling and put one of my uh, drop traps, where basically they can fall in but they can't climb back out, and try to get these juveniles out of the ceiling. Um, unfortunately, they didn't realize it until it was too late that um, two of them had already expired. I was able to get at least one of them out and get them to a rehabber to get it back to a healthy enough condition where they could let it go. That was an, uh, an unfortunate one. But um, the, diff the problem with these guys is that they are beaten up and killed by the bigger squirrels that we have around here. One is uh, actually a non-native species to Washington, which is the eastern gray squirrel. You see them everywhere. They are the 
epitome of what you say when you of what you see when you hear the word squirrel. They that is just what they do. So with those guys, they are they get into trash bins. They get into uh, you'll find them chewing on plastic garbage cans regularly. They get into homes. I call them chainsaws with fuzzy tails. They are don't get me wrong. They are absolutely adorable, but part of the problem is that that adorableness has gotten them moved to all different parts of the country where they shouldn't be, and Western Washington is one of those. Uh, what ended up happening is they were brought out to where I'm, the area where I live, uh, in the early 1910s by people that thought they looked cute in parks, and um, ended up being they they exploded in population. Gray squirrels can give birth up to two times a year. One in, in the February, March, and uh, July, August is when they give birth to two sets of litter. Now, they don't always give birth to two litters in a year, but they have the ability to do it. So, And they can have a litter of anywhere from uh, two to four. Uh, I have pulled six out, but that was because a pair of females were sharing the same nesting site. So, want to become famous? Buy followers, primes, and viewers. Okay, sure. I have. I don't want to be famous. I just want to have fun. That's really all I'm here for. Um, and I, don't, I have a feeling that this is probably a bot. I have no clue. I really don't. Um, man, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> So basically, oh, that's right, the gray squirrels. We do actually have our own native gray squirrel here out in Washington. It is the western gray squirrel. They are actually bigger and, in my opinion, much prettier. Let me see if I can not find a picture of one for the western gray squirrel. The problem with the western gray squirrel is that um, it is listed to the state as a endangered species to walk to Western Washington. Uh, at least that's how they have it listed for the state specifically, not as a general, uh, but more as a, um, a statewide species. So let me put this picture up here. Do, do, do. Just to show you the difference between a gray squirrel and a western gray squirrel. There we go. So this is a western gray squirrel and you can see that um, basically they are they are bigger. I mean those don't have anything for a comparison but they have a much more of a gray silver coloration to their fur as opposed to the brown gray splotch or uh, shading that the eastern gray squirrel has. Um, they are also the largest squirrel species that we have here in North America. They are about two feet to 26 inches long. The eastern gray squirrel is a bit shorter than that, about 20 to 18 inches long. So uh, with these guys, you will never see them in western Washington ever again. They just they don't exist here anymore, and that's an unfortunate situation. Part of it is the um, actually urbanization. Uh, development and removal of natural landscape has made it very hard for these guys to compete because they're so small and they weren't able to adapt to cities. So it's an unfortunate an unfortunate situation, but at the same time, we don't have more than half the actual species that ever existed on the planet anymore. Um, extinction is just a natural situation that happens. And this is, while it has accelerated, this was probably one of the species that it wasn't inevitable for the situation. Do we know that for sure? No, we don't. And then that's all we can do is make best of what we got. Um, moving on from squirrels, we actually also have um, a chipmunk species. We actually have two of them. Uh, one is the... Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped an entire squirrel. And they are the northern flying squirrels. They are one of the cutest squirrels that you will ever find. Uh, the northern flying squirrel, they are also listed as a protected species um, for our state area. And when that's mainly because there's too much of a benefit for them as opposed to a problem that they can create. 
Uh, yes, you're going to have a lot of people saying, oh, they're basically just rats with good PR. Yes, that is also true in terms of the amount of damage that they can do. Um, I like to think of these squirrels as uh, they have capes. They have little flaps of fur underneath their, uh, underneath their arms that allows them to glide through the air as they go. So it's not so much that they fly, they're great gliders. What's, what's, well, how did Toy Story, Story, Toy Story go? It's not flying, it's falling with style. And these guys do a lot of that. <laughs> so, um, chipmunks, that's right. Uh, one of the more common ones we have out here is the Townsend chipmunk. I mean, they're kind of all over the place. Um, oh, I just had that. Um, yeah, we have the Townsend chipmunk and the yellow pine chipmunk. There's not much of a difference between the two, aside from... <coughs> oh, excuse me. There's not much of a difference between them except um, color variation, and that's about it. Um, as you can guess, the pine chipmunk is going to be found more up in the... Uh, <coughs> In the mountainous area, whereas the yellow pine chipmunk, uh, you will find them, they're all in the same area of the war, of uh, the state, whereas the really only difference between them is minor coloration. But I don't get a lot of um, calls or issues from them. Um, I do see them get brought into the wildlife centers every so often. Um, so it's just one of those situations where if you can get them out and take care of them, cool. If not, you're probably not going to have a bunch of an issue with them to begin with. Um, now squirrels, especially specifically tree squirrels, like the gray squirrels and the Douglas squirrels, they have uh, different nesting sites that they use that are called drays. Um, they can actually choose between a couple of them. They'll build two or three within about a half square mile area and they'll bounce between them. So they have a summer home, a winter home, and a spring home, and then a nesting site. So they have different areas that they'll pick from, so they won't always stay in one particular spot in general. So, um, they are active all year round. Um, they don't hibernate. A lot of animals don't hibernate like a lot of people think. They basically uh, just have their ways and tricks of being able to survive the deep cold of winter. Excuse me, good grief. My body is rebelling against me, I swear. Um, and so with the gray squirrels, um, They've just learned to find bird feeders, garbage. Um, they're also, uh, squirrels also will eat meat. They have been found and regularly will eat birds. Uh, they'll eat nests, they'll eat mice. Uh, they are rodents. They are not complete herbivores. Uh, in times of dire straits, they will go for dog food and cat food. I mean, it's, it's whatever it takes to actually survive. And that's what these animals have to do especially when it comes to the um, the deep of winters. So, and I know I'm kind of on over the place. I'm doing this a little, this one's a little bit of a last minute talk, but it's just, it's, I said I wanted to do Thursdays, so I figured I'd pop on for a few minutes here talking about that. Um, the Clovers, I know you're there. I'm curious whoever else we have popping in here. It just says, while we're on the subject of squirrels, I know a lot of people see different things and hear different things. Oh, I have a couple stories I can share about my squirrels. So, I had a call of a, yes, I see you there, Master Godzilla man. Um, so, I had a call, what was it? About a week ago, uh, I get a call that there is a squirrel inside of a living room. That's surprising, I get it quite often. Uh, this one came through a uh, an open window. It was a nice enough day and they came through the window and they forgot to close it. So I end up going into this living room and the squirrel is sitting up on the blinds or up on the uh, a rail for the blinds of the house. And so walking around, I have my net. I have a collapsible fishing net that I carry around. It's just easy to pack in the truck. So I have my net and I get ready, I see him up there. So I have it posed right in front of me. If any of you know me, I do uh, LARP sword fighting. So two-handed swords, I, I know how to, how to get myself based with that. So I'm walking up and I have my net set. He tries to jump right over my head. I just overhand dunk him right into that net. And in the same motion, I hook it and pop him right out that window. 
that squirrel landed on the outside patio, sat there for about a good 10 seconds just looking around, trying to figure out exactly what happened to his world because last he knew, he was jumping over this thing that had a big brown thing on its head, and all of a sudden he's now outside. So, <laughs> what are those weird situations? Um, I do have another story where a uh, similar situation, squirrel in the living room, and he got himself behind the curtains, so there was no way to actually get a net. So I see where he is. I have super heavy gloves on. They're basically uh, a reinforced welding gloves. I go walking up to the curtain, and I, I see where he is, and I just grab him just right in the fabric and everything just to keep him in place. He's squeaking and everything, wants to get free. So I'm holding it with one hand, and I reach around behind the back. Well, I can't see where his head is. The problem is I grabbed him really low on the body. He turned around and bit the top of my glove knuckle. And let's just say, if you want to experience the same kind of pain, take a pair of pliers and grab that flap of skin on the top of your finger and just pinch. And that's about what it feels like to be bit through with a glove on by a squirrel. Um, <laughs> he didn't actually penetrate my skin, but the uh, the pressure of the bite just ended up peeling a couple layers of skin off. So I wasn't bleeding, but it was uh, it wasn't pleasant. I mean, I've pulled squirrels out of fireplaces. I've pulled them out of dryers. I had one where I quite literally turned on the had them turn on the dryer and he <laughs> shot straight out of the dryer. They didn't know what to do because. He wasn't coming out, and he wasn't coming out into my trap. So I had them turn on the dryer as I aimed the pipe to go the right direction, and he just came firing straight out of the vent. So, <laughs> oh no, what are you two conspirators up to? Because I don't like when I see people talking like that. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. No, I, I know what you two are doing. I know what Kurt does, and I know what Clover's attitude does. Oh no. So we're gonna <laughs> so we're gonna do this here. <laughs> uh, well I'll also let you guys plan for another time because I just wanted to give a quick talk. I just like making sure I'm doing this regularly enough or at least being able to post stuff uh, every so often. I figure out how to record this. So I'm learning. <laughs> So, I'm going to wrap this up here unless you guys got questions about the uh, squirrels, um, which actually at the moment, oh, yay, they do still have water in here. But yeah, if you guys have some questions, throw them at me real quick. Water. Be hydrated. Okay, ground squirrels. So, um... I don't have those out here in Western Washington. Now, there is, I have an associate of mine who works down in Southern California. She actually deals a lot with the California ground squirrel, and they are actually a burrowing squirrel. So they do actually live uh, out in the south, southwestern part of, no, southeast. She works in the southeast part of the desert. Um, no, don't. Feed them! Don't feed them! For crying out loud, don't feed anything! Oh my gosh. Okay, so you guys do have them up there. Um, now, are they? the difference is, are they the striped or are they spotted? Because the spotted uh, California ground squirrels that we have further south... Now, I should also rephrase. We do have ground squirrels in Washington, but it's the eastern side of Washington where... Um, it's basically a completely different environment than here in Western Washington. So, because um, a lot of people will also confuse the difference between of, um, you gave them cheesies. No, don't give them cheesies. Okay, if they're striped, that is technically a chipmunk. You know what, let me, I'm gonna, you know what? Okay, there it is. The striped, the 13-lined ground squirrel. That is different. I will admit to that. Um, uh, 
Interesting. So these ones actually stay in the desert zones and the Midwest as well. Um, they can range anywhere from southern Texas all the way up to uh, North Dakota and into Canada, and as far west as Ohio and out to Colorado uh, for the uh, these particular um, ground squirrels. But there is quite a few different ground squirrels out there. I need to turn off all of these messages before I start doing these things. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I honestly, unless I, unless you can find me a picture, and you guys can always send me pictures through um, Discord, or not Discord, through Twitch. You can send me pictures and messages, and I will happily take a look at everything and see what we can figure out exactly what it is and have a quick chat about it. Um, I, I seriously think, though, you probably just have chipmunks up by where you're at, unless I can see something else, but I have no data to say otherwise of whether it's a ground squirrel or a chipmunk. Um, the ground squirrels that, like I was saying, the California ground squirrels, California ground squirrel, um, these guys are absolutely terrible for the areas that they invade. Um, they are incredibly destructive. They burrow, they destroy a lot of plant life, they do all they can to actually try to survive. They will eat bone. They will eat animal remains. They'll eat eggs. They'll eat, they'll eat scorpions. They'll eat tarantulas. They'll eat everything they can. They're almost as bad as locusts. But the bigger problem is that they burrow out under things. And since a lot of homes in California, um, yeah, you've got the 13 line there. Um, like in California, Nevada, New Mexico, anywhere, because a lot of those homes are built on concrete slabs. So what ends up happening is they burrow underneath that flat concrete platform and they make their burrow system underneath that whole thing, which can cause the foundation to crack and sag. And that's just a problem nobody wants. Oh, oh I got a picture sent to me. I see the face. Okay. I see the face. If you can find me a picture of the side, I'm curious. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, dude. I absolutely love slabs. You know why? Because, um, can you send pictures in this? Yeah, you two have, uh, you two have Facebook, so you can send it to each other. Uh, but with the, now you got me thinking. I think that is, I think that is a ground squirrel. Let me do some looking. No, not, ugh. Okay, that's a chipmunk. That is absolutely a chipmunk. As far as the specific, I think. No, that's not the Townsend. No, hmm. Chipmunk in Canada. Hmm. Okay. What do you have up there? No, I think you have. I think you have a. Um, I want to say they're a pine squirrel, is what they are. One of the smaller, kind of like my Douglas squirrels. I want to say it's a variant of that. 
where um, Manning Park. Well, I'll be darned. Colombian ground squirrel. Okay. Interesting. Ha, huh, I will have to dig into these guys. I don't know much about them. Neat. Colombian ground squirrel. Very cool. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Oh. And here's why. This is exactly what I was talking about. They are on the other side of the state. We do have, these are the ground squirrels that we actually have here in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. And yes, they do branch up into Canada, BC area. Um, so yes, the Colombian ground squirrel. And, but the, the, uh, the science rings true in the fact that these guys actually um, still deal with the uh, the arid to semi to semi temperate areas. I'm using the wrong word, but I'm trying to remember exactly what it what it, the terminology was. But basically, it's um, mildly arid. It is a lot of that area that these guys deal with, and it's also up into the more mountainous regions of that part of the state too. So I will never see them in my area, but. Uh, yeah, these guys are, um, yeah, actually that's a great idea. If, uh, if folks start seeing stuff and they're like in an area or in a, um, a park, I mean, yeah, I'll be the first to admit, I don't know everything. I will absolutely be the first to say, I know, I don't know everything and I want to know everything. So I need you guys to find stuff and see exactly if I can figure it out. And if I don't, I will give a talk about it later. How's that sound? No, I'm all excited to talk about these guys. Holy cow. I'll add that to my list of stuff to get onto. I'm okay with that. Yeah, let me put... Yeah, here's that picture. I want to post this picture. Let's say if I can even... <laughs> get the load. Here we go. We'll do this one. Let's change the picture to be, yeah, there he is. That is the Colombian ground squirrel. Oh, he sent me pictures too. Oh, I don't have it pulled up. That's why I don't see it yet. Hang on. You're making me pull up my Facebook and all my other chats and everything. Good grief, guys. All right, Ice Toke, get that sent over. Listen. Okay. Yeah, send me send those um, send me those pictures. I want to see what you're talking about, and I'll see if I can't load some up. But if you got the 13 line ground squirrels, those ones are uh, I do remember them being a nightmare to deal with. So I really am now. What? What am I in trouble for? Yeah, those are the uh, yeah, those are the uh, the ground squirrels. I saw those ones. So what am I what am I in trouble for? Please, please do tell, because <laughs> I do want to know. I don't know everything, and I want to know it. But I don't know where everything is to know. Oh, good lord. You two are going to be the death of me, I swear. Or at least, no, you two are going to be the death of my channel is what's going to happen. Because it's just going to be all, the two of you trolling me with different things. When I really want to try to get some more people involved with this. I know that's what's going to happen. Uh, so, alright guys. Well, I'm going to wrap this up here. Um... Like I say, I just wanted to have a quick talk tonight. We'll see if we get some other stuff um, pulled up. <sighs> Y'all, I appreciate that, guys. I really do. Um, I kind of think this is a thing that I really want to try pushing more for the 
wildlife, not just wildlife, but I also do want to try pushing stuff for the pest industry. Because I don't know that the, uh, I know we have the Pest Geek podcast, we have the wildlife edition of the Pest Geek podcast, and we got a couple other <clears throat> trapper pro- podcasts and whatnot, but I want this to be more about, like, animals and animal, stop that. What are you, stop, no, stop buzzing me. Always connected to something, I swear. Um... But yeah, let's see if we can't get this to grow. I mean, I'll be trying to post more things more often. Um, I'm trying to figure out a regular regular schedule. Um, my time is going to be difficult because I have a gigantic project that I'm going to be starting hopefully in the next few weeks here down in Seattle. Uh, I'm not going to say much because I did sign an NDA uh, for what exactly it is that I'm working on. Uh, if you guys know, because I've talked to different people about this, I need you to keep it on the lowdown because this could have, this is a sensitive area and it's a sensitive situation. So I got to be very careful about how it's all going. So otherwise, you guys have a good night. We'll talk again and I'll see you when I see you.